In this video, I'm going to talk about periodic potentials, and in particular, I'm going to be looking at a periodic potential where the potentials are uh, delta functions. And so it looks like this, and this is called a Dirac comb. And so you can see it kind of looks like a comb, but uh, the there is the there are these delta functions where there is a potential, and then between these delta functions there is zero potential and so it's just these quick spikes of potential here and so we see that there are these repeating units uh, these repeating lines here uh, where you know if you watch my last video which I hope you did before watching this one uh, you know this can be sort of generalized to two and three dimensions but for simplicity we'll be talking in one dimension here and so each of these line segments between these potentials is uh, identical in length and so uh, this image which I got from the Wikipedia article for the Dirac comb uses these T's but I'll be using A's since that's what uh, Griffiths uses and so each one of these A's or T's on this image uh, are equal in length and so uh, this here is just sort of uh, describing, again, the Bloch's theorem. And so we're saying that the potential uh, it, it x is equal to the potential at x plus any number of, uh, of these a units away, where n, this big n, is equal to integers. And we have it going all the way up to uh, about Avogadro's number. So we can have it going all the way up to 10 to the 23. And then we're imposing this boundary condition as well that uh, that this loops back around. So once we get up to 10 to the 23, then it just loops back to 0 here. Uh, and that's so we don't have to uh, take into consideration like actual boundaries on the size of like our material here, our metal or whatever it is that our material is, because we want this to be a perfect lattice and uh, real lattices when they get to the edge of the crystal start having different deformations and things like that. But uh, we are going for these simplified version, the sort of ideal lattice here. And so we will have this condition that it just loops back around. Uh, and so we are using, once again, Bloch's theorem. And so that's just saying, essentially, that uh, if we know the uh, Hamiltonian, if we know the Schrodinger equation in this cell right here, then it'll be just repeated cell after cell uh, all the way through. And so each cell uh, just looks exactly like the uh, cells later on. So once again, this is all just... <clears throat> recapitulation from the previous video, uh, but I wanted to get down here where uh, where I have this in uh, blue and uh, bold here. So the wave function between any two delta function potentials is just repeated in every other cell. And so if we do no translation, so we do zero translation, we have our wave function here. Uh, if we do a translation one cell over, uh, we just get this wave function here times this phase factor, uh, which has a magnitude of one. And same if we do a translation of two over, uh, we just end up with this eigenvalue here, which has a magnitude of one. Uh, and so wave function that Functions that do not satisfy the uh, block theorem are forbidden from our solution. Uh, this means that there are eigenstates that are forbidden and therefore eigenvalues, which are energies that are forbidden, uh, which comes into our band structure stuff. Uh, and then these, yeah, so these forbidden states result in band gaps between valence and conduction bands and insulators, semiconductors, and conductors. All right. And so as stated, the potential is a repeating delta function. So this is our delta function, and it's repeating j, uh, j equals 0 all the way up to n minus 1 times. Uh, and so everywhere else, our potential is 0, which means that everywhere else, we don't have to have this potential part. And so we can just uh, end up with this minus k squared times our uh, wave function here as uh, as the solution where k is defined as this. Uh, and so a general solution, so we have our wave function here is just equal to a sine of kx plus cosine of kx. Uh, 
and so in this case we don't need this part because uh, the Q is uh, equal to this and n is just equal to zero so Q is zero and anything to the zeroth power is one uh, but then any other one we will need that phase factor and so if we're looking at one to the left of the origin so say we're looking at a cell to the right of the origin which is the one where n equals zero then we want to look at the one to the left of it and we will get a solution that looks like this which does have this phase factor here and so the origin is at x equals zero so we want to look at the solution where x equals zero and so we have this uh, so continuity at x equals zero means that uh, that we have to have b be equal to this uh, so b has to be equal to this here and so when we are want, want to get the derivative of our wave function at x equals zero, because we want this to be continuous at the potentials, what we need to do is, uh, is this. So we're looking at the derivative of our wave function, uh, little tiny uh, spaces above zero minus little tiny spaces below zero. And we want to take the limit as those uh, infinitesimal spaces uh, go to zero. And what we will find is that it is equal to uh, the limit as epsilon goes to zero of the integral of our uh, potential here. And so we'll first focus on this part here. So if we take the derivative of our uh, wave function here, and so this is just showing the, taking the derivative for the one to the left of the origin, uh, which uh, we end up getting this right here. Uh, and we would do the same thing for to the right of the origin where our phase factor is just equal to one. And so now we want to take the difference as the limit goes of uh, epsilon goes to zero for uh, for to the right of our origin here minus the left of our origin here. And so we will do uh, so there's. And this, this video is going to have quite a bit of this math because uh, because Griffith doesn't actually go through all the math steps here. He just kind of says uh, that, well, he doesn't even show this. He, he refers back to an earlier chapter where we were looking at uh, at one dimensional solutions to the Schrodinger equation uh, and says that uh, that we need to do that. And then he just kind of gives this this thing that I have in purple here. So I am just showing all of the mathematical steps here. And if you're interested in going through this uh, slower on your own, as usual, the, the lecture notes will be linked to in the description down below so you can go through this. Uh, I try to color code things in ways that make sense to me. Uh, so I have the, the B equal this stuff in blue. I have the one to the right of the origin in this sort of darker brown, the one to the left in this sort of lighter brown. And so you can kind of follow along where everything is happening here. Uh, and then you get to this. And so I just uh, then sort of defined this. this. This thing right here is just what I have in purple. But now I want to use this as its own sort of, uh, you know, unit. And so I just change the color of it so it's in purple here. And so now we want to look at this limit for the integral here uh, of our potential. And so our potential is equal to this alpha times the delta function, where the alpha is just sort of the size of the delta function. Uh, and so we have this limit uh, as this epsilon goes to zero. So we're kind of moving in from both sides onto the origin. And so then we just multiply by this 2m over h bar squared here. And we end up with the 2m alpha over h bar squared times our wave function at zero. And so we put that together. Uh, we have this purple part here that we calculated above, above, and uh, we have it equal to this. Uh, but since at cosine at zero is going to be equal to one and sine of zero uh, is going to be equal to zero, then our psi at zero, our wave function at zero is just equal to B. And so we end up with this. So we solve uh, this B for the A sine of KA. So we go through the steps here. Uh, once again, 
Griffiths doesn't go through the steps, but uh, you can look at the steps here. And we want to get it in this form because we want to make this substitution for A. Uh, and so we substitute this into the previous where our A purple, which is right here, uh, is now going to be equal to this right here. And so we have this substituted in. Uh, we divide through by KB, so uh, this B goes away, we end up with a K in the denominator there. This KB goes away, this KB goes away. We multiply through by sine of KA, so it gets rid of the KAs in the denominators here, but now this sine is squared and we have a sine KA here. We factor out this part in brown, uh, then we distribute this uh, this. Uh, this exponent here, this exponential in purple here to the cosine and the sine squared. Uh, we do some simplifications here. We use this trig identity that cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared so that we get this minus sine squared uh, times this exponential and then plus uh, sine squared times this exponential and so we can just cancel those things out. Uh, so this exponential here and this exponential here, I group those up together here. And so we end up with this, uh, this uh, right here, we divide through by two, uh, which gets rid of the two in this numerator here, gets rid of that two, and get we get this over two. And so this is a trig identity. So it's the cosine of QA. And so we end up with cosine of QA minus cosine of KA uh, equal to this. And then we finally end up with this. And so uh, once again, uh, Griffiths just kind of goes right from this. Uh, he gives us this and says to make the substitution, skips all this and goes right to here. Uh, so if you're interested in looking at all those steps in more detail, then, uh, then yeah, I would recommend checking out my lecture notes in the description. Uh, so we make these substitutions, so our Z is defined as the KA in here, this beta as our M alpha A uh, over H bar squared. Uh, and so here I just show why we're sort of making these substitutions. Uh, so the thing to remember is just that the Z is sort of uh, proportional to this K here, where if you remember the K is proportional to the, uh, to the frequency, which is proportional to the energy. And so the Z is sort of proportional to the energy. Uh, so we end up uh, getting this, uh, well, this part here, this cosine KA, then this stuff, which after the substitutions ends up being this cosine z plus this, and we just uh, define that as a function of z. And so here uh, I make that, uh, that reminder that the variable z is proportional to k, and k is proportional to energy, and so f of z is a function of energy, or we can think about it that way, where this beta here is proportional to uh, to the strength of the potential. And so uh, larger beta means larger potentials. And so you can see if beta is zero, if there's no potentials, then we just end up with this cosine of z here. But uh, once we start adding potentials, then we start adding this, uh, this factor, uh, this term right here onto it. Uh, and so notice that f of z is able to go above one and below minus one because of this term right here. So if beta is greater than zero, uh, yet cosine of z uh, is unable to go above uh, or above plus one or below minus one. So the places where this is, where the magnitude of this is greater than one are the gaps that represent the forbidden energies. And so I actually made this Desmos graph here, which I have linked to in these uh, lecture notes. Uh, and so, yeah, this is what it looks like. So if we have, I have B here equal to zero, B is our beta. So this is our function up here. So we see that here, this just stays nice between the minus one and plus one. Uh, and so if I add a little bit of, of this, we see that it starts going above and below here. Uh, and we see that 
as I keep adding more, we start getting these gaps here. And so these band gaps here are places that are forbidden energies. And so only here where you see the green uh, do we have allowed energies. And so you can see as I add more uh, as I add uh, more strength to our potential, which is what this B or beta represents, uh, we start getting these larger and larger band gaps here. So I have this going all the way to 50. Uh, and so you see that this part here is almost completely disappeared. Uh, but the, the point is uh, that the strength of the potentials in our lattice will determine sort of the band gaps that uh, that will be in our uh, uh, that it will be in our allowed energies and so uh, we can actually look at so this is the function here that is shown in the Griffiths textbook and so you can see it's kind of the same thing this is where beta is equal to 10 so that's what I have here so you can see there's these uh, these gaps here. Uh, and so you can see this shows these little uh, bands here of allowed energies where the function is between minus one and plus one. Uh, it's disallowed where it's above plus one or below minus one. And so that will give us band gaps that look like this. Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit more about uh, what these bands and band gaps mean in the next video and uh, especially how that uh, how that relates to things like the conductivity of whatever the substance is uh, but this video was basically a long-winded way of getting to this function right here uh, but remember we started uh, we started with just our Schrodinger equation, uh, and we wanted to look at what was going on at the potential. So we wanted to look at the continuity of the potential. And so it's essentially saying that uh, that when you have discontinuities at the potential, those are uh, disallowed energies. Uh, whereas if you have continuities, those will be allowed energies. And the discontinuities and continuities that you get will be based on the strengths of those potentials. Uh, it'll also be based on the size of the cells, and that's why Z isn't just a function of K, but also A, which is the size of the cell. And so uh, if we have a different cell size, uh, then that will also give us, you know, different uh, sort of band structures. Uh, so different looking band structures like this. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to uh, drone on too long. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.